We're just heading off into the Costa Rica Dome. It's an expedition we've been planning for a couple of years. It's a huge privilege to come out to the dome, uh, to come this far offshore to see the huge vastness. This is a great opportunity to understand more particularly about the movements of sea turtles and sharks, both of which have species that are listed as threatened or endangered. The idea is to go document the rich biodiversity that's out there. We're going to go look for blue whales, for sharks. We're going to do some phytoplankton samples, some water samples, so that we can study this very rich, relatively unstudied area. Since the middle of the 20th century, 90% of many of the big fish have declined. They're gone, they're gone. The turtles, same pattern. From abundance to a time when their future is in serious doubt. The high seas, the area that embraces most of the Central American dome, it's part of the global commons. It belongs to everyone and no one. And presently it's being exploited disproportionately by a few. The Dome is the most fantastic oceanographic place. Uh, technically, uh, and quite complicatedly, it's a shoaling thermocline. I like to think of it like a, a hard boiled egg. So that the egg is moving up, but actually there are eddies and eddy fields that are making this more complicated, and the winds whip the surface water away, a bit like taking the top off the egg. And in the middle of the egg is the cold water that's welling up from deep. And that cold water is what's really important, and that's attracting all of the uh, uh, zooplankton and the phytoplankton that are being sampled, and that other food source for uh, all of the uh, predatory creatures. So it's like happy hour for uh, blue whales, for sharks and rays, for dolphins, and for uh, and as a as a route migration route for um, turtles as well. So all of this is uh, extremely important in terms of a priority for conservation. Right now we're drifting southeast, uh, southeast uh, towards the sea mountains right here. We're a little too far away, but this is where the temperature change starts. We're going to try it right here first. Tomorrow we'll be on top looking of at the monitor tree. and we're seeing the migration of all this uh, small pelagic life that are coming up. As soon as the sun goes, goes down, they come up because predators cannot find them. And after them come the predators and hopefully we'll catch something to be able to target and study it. Eh, estamos usando marcas satelitales para tiburones migratorios. Eh, tuvimos la oportunidad de encontrarnos con pescadores eh, de long line o de palangre aquí a 150 millas del domo y gracias a, a la, al apoyo de ellos pudimos marcar dos tiburones eh, grises, silky sharks o carcarinos falciformis. Eh, eran dos machos de más o menos 130 centímetros de longitud total y ahora esperamos Eh, realmente eh, ver hacia dónde se mueven ellos buscando las temperaturas del domo, que eso es el fin de esta, de esta expedición. Conocer más sobre el domo, conocer más sobre los pelágicos que vienen a esta importante área y saber qué hacen estos pelágicos cuando no están acá en el domo. Central America Dome is a feeding area as well as a breeding area. It's a place that has a magnified significance out there in the ocean, but it matters to those connected to the land in, in both directions. Exactly, and, and I think that we have already the sufficient information with the turtles example, you know, <laughs> yeah. that they don't, it's not that they go anywhere, they go to certain places in this vast yeah. expanse of And through oceans. corridors, and through corridors. That, that you can now track. We yes. can see it the way we couldn't see it 
even 20 years ago. Yeah. These patterns are becoming clear. And, and important to manage it, you know, rationally and, 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 and to protect them because they are the backbone of the system. that we captured earlier today. We're making sure that the tag is nicely situated on the carapace so that we optimize satellite transmissions. And we also want to position it in a way that it minimizes the drag on the turtle when she or he swims. After the satellite tag is secured firmly and everything is dry, we're gonna release the turtles back to sea, very close to where we picked them up and we'll be able to track them via satellite transmissions over the next few months or maybe even years. The Convention on Biological Diversity have classified and identified the dome as an ecologically or biologically significant area. And this is against seven internationally agreed criteria. Uh, and those criteria determine that relatively and significantly this area needs attention and extra care needs to be taken about human impact. There are very few places in the world like the Costa Rica Thermal Dome. Blue whales visit every year to feed and give birth. You have species of sharks, thrushes, silkies going there and feeding. You have spinner dolphins, common dolphins living together with yellow king tuna, searching for food. Then you have sailfish that visit every year and stay on the border of the dome looking around hunting for sardines. You have this rich explosion of phytoplankton, zooplankton, just congregating everything in one single place. It is important for Central American countries to come together and really show a desire to manage this important area, to conserve it for the future. If we don't manage the dome properly, we will lose one of the most important and biodiverse areas in the world. <laughs>